And there is a better way, and this is what we do in my lab. Uh, it's called clumped isotopes. And clumped isotope is essentially an extension of the regular stable isotope that I've um, talked about previously. So let's look at what the clumped isotopes do. And here I show you a crystal structure for calcium carbonate. So for isotopologues, we like to look at equilibrium between different isotopologues. And in this case here, I'm showing you an equilibrium reaction between calcium carbonates, two molecules of calcium carbonate. One has a calcium attached to a C13 and 3O16. The other one on the left side has a calcium attached to a C12, an O18, and 2O16. And this is equivalent to this other potential distribution of isotopes within the isotopologues, which comprise one carbonate containing a calcium attached to a C13, an O18, and 2O16, and a calcium attached to a C12 and 3O16. And if you look at the total amount of O16, O18, carbon-13, carbon-12, and calcium, these two parts of the equation are absolutely equivalent. And what we're truly interested in here is this species. That's where we have the C13 and the O18 attached in the same uh, molecule and the same mineral, the lattice of the same crystal. And the reason this is interesting is because the C13 and the O18 are so rare. So this is a rare isotopologue. You only have about 40 ppm level of that particular isotopologue. But also, due to thermodynamic, this um, species of the heavy, heavy substitution, that's what we call the clumped isotope, where the heavy 13 and the heavy O18 are clumped together, this only forms at lower temperature. So this is an indication of the temperature of formation, and this is not dependent on the fluid composition. It's only dependent on the composition of the solid phase, not at all the water. And so it's, it's extremely uh, valuable. So then what we, what we do, we acidify this particular species and we liberate a CO2 of mass 47, 47 because 1C13, 1018, 1016 give you a mass of 47. And this is the famous clumped isotopes where the C13, 018 are clumped together. Now we measure the abundance of that mass 47 because we know that if you look at the deviation between the proportion of, of uh, C13, O18 into your mineral and a completely random distribution, a stochastic distribution of those isotopolog, that difference known as cap 47, big delta, we call this cap, is proportional to the temperature of formation of the, of the mineral. So here's an example, and this is from Oman again. This is coming actually from a place you visited before, the Al Hukuf High. And um, I, to make a long story short, it shows you a little bit of some applications that we can do with these uh, particular, um, particular technique. On the vertical axis, we have the temperature. Notice that I've reversed the temperature axis so that the higher temperature representing greater burial is at the bottom. And on the horizontal axis, we have a calculated delta O18 of the fluid because we have um, everything we need to do this. We have the delta O18 of, the, uh, of uh, the calcite. We have the temperature from the clumped isotope, and we can calculate the delta O18 of the fluid. And we've measured here oysters, so Cretaceous oysters, and also some uh, dolomite. And what we see is that actually the maximum temperature that we record in the system is around 65, 70 degrees. We can translate this into a burial depth. And so we, we, in this paper, we revised the burial estimate of this particular formation. We pushed it by six, 700 meters to one to 1.2 kilometers of total burial. And also the other thing that is visible here is that some of the oysters plot on a path that is known as a closed system recrystallization pathway. In other words, the system recrystallizes, but there's not a lot of fluid in the system. And so we, we tend to keep the delta routine the same, but change the temperature because we recrystallize at higher temperature.